Welcome to Meet the Candidates on BCTV. Um, my name is Jerry Levy. I suppose many of you know me because I've been active in the community since I moved here in permanently in 1975. Um, but I think I should say a little about myself um, for those who don't. First of all, I am a candidate for Wyndham County Senate in the Liberty Union Party. Uh, as I said before, I moved to Vermont in the 70s, seeking a better life like so many did. I lived on a commune for a number of years. And then I started teaching part-time sociology at Marlboro College. I also became very active in the local theater, in music, and eventually I became very active in the Liberty Union Party. I had always been seeking a political party where one did not have to um, lie, <laughs> but could basically say what one thought, uh, and that there was no impetus to prevent us from saying what we thought was the truth. And uh, of course, like many of you, I was opposed to the war, opposed to the actions of our government, opposed to segregation and for a more equitable society where the resources of our society would be shared equally and that uh, uh, housing, a job, an education, health care, access to the finer things in life, to good food, to clean air, to vacations would not be limited to those people who had enough money to buy it, no matter how expensive it was. But those things that we value in life would be available to all. And of course, that's never been the case. Like many of you, I was seeking that in Vermont. And I was also seeking a way of expressing that politically. And I had been a member of uh, a number of leftist parties and felt that uh, I really didn't have that kind of opportunity. So um, I joined the party in 1978 and I was a candidate for auditor of accounts. And then the next year I decided to be a candidate for the U.S. Senate. And I um, uh, proceeded to be a candidate for the U.S. Senate, oh, maybe six or seven times. In between, I would sometimes be a candidate for Secretary of State um, and Auditor of, of Accounts in off years. And then when I got, uh, when I stopped driving uh, and I didn't have the energy level to pursue a full-time job and travel all all around the state, I started uh, running for, excuse me, being a candidate for the uh, Wyndham County uh, State Senate. And this is my third, um, uh, my third time uh, um, being a candidate for this office. Now, the first thing you might say is, well, why are you a candidate all the time for uh, these positions when you obviously have no chance of winning and um, aren't you on some kind of ego trip? Uh, and the, the truth of the matter is I've always thought that that being a candidate for office isn't always about min winning, but that that the election should have a, should be a conversation about what we who we are and what we want to do in the society. Now, uh, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, that we live in a time which is of extremely um, difficult period in which the very um, 
sense of being able to live in a democracy is under attack. And of course, um, when I say that, you also have to say that for certain groups of people, African Americans, Native American Indians, uh, Latinos, um, uh, people of color, uh, women, children, youth, other groups, uh, certain uh, large numbers, for, for, for large numbers of these groups, the apocalypse has always happened. They, they have never felt that they live in an equitable society. Uh, and and so, th so that the, um, the problem now that a, um, a authoritarian leader who uh, is in the tradition of all authoritarian leaders that live in most countries has been elected president of the United States. Um, for these people, uh, that is not really such a big change because they have felt that they were living in such a society before. So um, I said before, we have to have a conversation. So I have always been a candidate, knowing that my chances of winning were very small, but that I wanted as a citizen and as a person who represented a particular political stance, that is to say, I believe that, that the, the good things of life are not something that we should compete with for, with everybody else, but should be a natural right, and that everybody should have access to these things. How they achieve these things, um, we, all may very dis we all may disagree, but humanists of all sorts, whether they be conservative, conservatives, liberal, or radical, really believe that all people should have uh, the, the best in life. Um, my particular opinion is that waging wars with high military budgets and um, uh, trying to have a society in which people compete for profit is not a particularly rational way of meeting human needs. You might say I'm a socialist, but the term socialism is kind of a slogan. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that, and this is in the Liberty Union platform, that the, that the, the essential qualities of life, uh, decent air, decent water, decent food, decent housing, education in a complex society, healthcare, access to the finer things of life should be available to all, not because of how much money they have, but because we as a society should harness the resources of the earth and use them well. So that's why I joined the Liberty Union Party, because the, the Liberty Union Party not only allowed, but encouraged me to express those values. And I did what I could. And I am still doing what I could. So you ask me, why am I still a candidate? I'm still a candidate because I believe that the people who actually are going to be elected want people to have a conversation with them, want people who are not subject to the, to the um, self-censorship that they have to gain, engage in often because they are members of a political party that feels that if they uh, really say what's on their mind, uh, the party won't like it or they will have no chance of being elected. So I think, I think the Liberty Union Party has played a very, very important role in putting candidates up for office. My colleague, Aaron Diamondstone, uh, a son of our late um, leader, uh, Peter Diamondstone, has become a wonderful candidate. And I'm honored to be uh, a candidate with him. Um, and his gentle, soft-spokenness and uh, willingness to get to the issues is 
wonderful. And so I think, I, I hope you will take a, a close look at him. Um, so um, to go on, I think I have about 16 minutes left. Um, what is it that we really have to be concerned with in the coming elections? And what, would I, what do I say to the other people who are candidates for office and to the people of Vermont and to the people of Wyndham County in particular? Well, what I have to say is that First of all, I applaud the efforts of people in the legislature and all others who in this time of crisis where the federal government is making uh, incredible cuts and oppressing the, the people in ways that the federal government always have, but only more so uh, the, the, the separation of uh, children from their parents, the, the, the deportation of immigrants, the, the, the horrible treatment of prisoners, the, the, the lack of uh, the, the, the policies of the federal government putting tens of millions of people in fear by their policies, a policy of fear. What do I say to our legislators? who are in the midst of this trying to maintain essential services. And what do I say to the, all the good people of Vermont and Wyndham County who are trying to help people and provide services in education and health care in, in all sorts of areas? I say, I applaud you. I applaud you. And, 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 and I hope you continue what you are doing. It's essential that we continue trying to meet human needs during this horrible period of time where the truth of the matter is, if the federal government could, it would be, a, it would be one man rule with a complete dictatorship with no one opposing what our president could do and the police would support him. And anybody who disagreed would be at risk and we would no longer uh, be able to meet publicly and express our opinions because we would be arrested immediately. And, I, and, and uh, so what do we do in a situation which um, basically uh, I think a fair-minded person would say that the federal government, with the, uh, not the entire federal government, much of the federal government uh, um, thankfully is opposed to that. But if Trump could, he would be, he would exercise one man rule, and I use the word man very consciously. What do we do in a situation like that? Well, I say, we discuss it. We plan for it. We, um, we have to uh, make certain that that doesn't occur. And one way of making certain is to say that we will continue to oppose it. The question is, how will we oppose it? By armed rebellion? Uh, that would be crazy. Uh, we would have to set up uh, an underground resistance where people were in the kind of contact with that they could continue to exist in the society just as resistances have occurred in previous years. And for that, we need communication. We need communication across the parties. We need people to uh, know and trust each other better and, and, and uh, attempt to, to visualize what would happen. Of course, we hope that that doesn't happen. We hope that the resistance that is occurring now will be enough to pre prevent that. But what I am advocating and what I would tell my legislatures that people who are in positions of responsibility and the people who um, uh, the leadership of the police and education and all the important institutions of Wyndham County, 
we should be along with expending most of our energy trying to maintain a society that is under attack and exercising our democracy by being candidates for office and, 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 and stating our views and all of the wonderful things that people are doing. Uh, the um, people who are uh, giving public lectures about the problems of authoritarian rule at the River Garden and uh, elsewhere. All of the wonderful things that are going on. We should continue to do these things, but we should begin a discussion of how we are going to deal with the possibility that Trump may attempt to take total power, which would mean that um, all of these um, ways in which we traditionally try to exercise our democracy and live in a community would be um, uh, made very problematic. Uh, very problematic. So I'm saying that along with all the wonderful things we are doing and the, um, the ways in which, and I'll tell you, uh, our legislatures who, who have humanistic values are very frustrated. They know what's being done to their efforts. They are um, attempting to provide services in a situation which is becoming increasingly difficult. So there is a lot in common between the people who are outside the system, like candidates in the Liberty Union Party, and uh, the people who have responsibility for running the government and running the agencies, uh, the educational and social work and uh, 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 law enforcement agencies and other and veterans administration, all of these a agencies that that are charged with the the task of um, meeting human needs. They know that their values, their ability to act, is under severe attack, and we have to admire uh, uh, and applaud their efforts to keep going. So there is a lot in common between all of us, and I believe we, we need to strengthen our community bonds and our means of communication even, even more so than we have in the past. So um, I also believe that we are in a situation in which, in which a possibly a lot of good could come out of this. Um, I'm not by nature an optimist, uh, but I think that what I see has happened is that because, um, because so many people are aware that uh, values and ways of living that they valued are under attack, not only for the people who they identify with and have been trying to help all these years, their values have been under attack since they were slaves or since they were uh, living in um, their, uh, the Native Americans who were living in their communities. Um, and, and uh, uh, the Latinos and the Asians and all of the minorities who were oppressed merely because of the, uh, the color of their skin or their culture. They are aware of how um, vulnerable their situation has been and is. What is happening is that Groups that have not been previously oppressed have become aware not only of the vulnerability of other groups who they would like to help, but of their own vulnerability, that it could come to a time when their ability to get good food, their ability to get 
clean water, their ability to breathe fresh air, their ability to speak freely, their ability to have meetings in their houses, their ability to um, undertake all of the good things of life in local communities is indeed under attack and in danger of being undermined in ways that we have never previously experienced because never before have we had someone with the values that our president have had, has had become president. There have always been groups that wanted to do, to do this. The distinction is that we've never been faced with someone in the federal office who would like to eliminate all of the balances that make a formal democracy possible. Excuse me. We are aware of that. And so the good that can come out of this is that we will insist that this not happen. And we will do what is necessary, whether it means going out and voting and electing uh, officials in state and local government who will be able to have some balance against, be able to create and sustain some balance against authoritarian rule, uh, which seems to be descending upon us very, very rapidly. And that we will become, as a result of this crisis, more aware that we are all human beings. That is to say, we are all human beings and whatever our cultural differences, we have the same needs. We respond to the need to be loved, to be cared for. We respond to empathy. We respond to the opportunity to, to live in the natural world. We respond positively to anyone's efforts to be humane. And we can discover through the conflict that is occurring and through the coalition that the coalition that involves people who have incredible political differences, the coalition that is developing, which is opposed to authoritarian rule, and this coalition has people in it, each of whom sincerely believe that their political way is the way that will solve these problems. I think we, at the same time, that we have to stick to our own views about how problems can be solved. We have to recognize uh, where it exists, the positive intent of other people who have different views than us, and we have to communicate with them, and we have to listen to them. And those of us who are socialists, who believe that uh, uh, the resources of the world should be shared, not by having this irrational, competitive rigmarole, which is supposed to solve problems, that, that we believe that, and we still believe that, that, but we are willing to recognize that other people also have good intentions, and we should listen to them. And we should ask them to listen to us. So I have about two minutes left. And I want to say, first of all, I want to again thank uh, Brattleboro TV for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. I want to thank the Liberty Union Party for all the years they have given me a forum through which I could express my views politically in a way that did not violate my values. And I want to thank the people in the Liberty Union Party who kept it going all these years. Certainly, Peter Diamondstone, who did so much, and Doris, who did so much, and so many others 
who basically, and so many people now, who are keeping the Liberty Union Party alive, despite the fact that Peter is gone, uh, particularly Aaron Diamondstone, who I have the pleasure to be a colleague with in this election in this county. And I want to say that um, I'm so happy that we have candidates who are uh, up for election in all the major um, uh, state and national offices. And I hope you will take a serious look at these people. They are fine people and listen to what they have to say. And I think finally, I want to thank uh, Vermont and particularly Wyndham County for giving me the opportunity to have had such a wonderful life in this town and in this county, to be a teacher, to have had the opportunity to play music and to do theater and to engage in politics because Vermont is a special place and gives people like us the opportunity to do all these wonderful things and I hope we will do everything we can to preserve all of this for everyone. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.